2013, University of Vermont Extension and Penn State Extension worked together to evaluate six small-scale oilseed press designs. While many people in the Northeast have begun to grow and process their own oilseed crops, there's not a lot of information available on the different commercially available presses for on-farm processing. The goals of this project were to gather information from the people who are actually using these presses on a regular basis and get it into the hands of interested new growers and processors. Researchers visited each press with canola, soybean, and sunflower seed and performed replicated trials to assess each press's operation and capacity. The idea was to test each press first as the operator would normally run it, then at a faster pace to put as much seed through the press as possible, and then finally at a slow pace to extract more oil from the same seed. The presses evaluated are all considered small-scale cold presses, appropriate for on-farm use. An oilseed press essentially extracts oil from oil seeds, such as sunflower, canola, and soybeans. The seed starts in a hopper or feed bin, is forced through the press with a rotating screw that also crushes the seed against a nozzle and screen, separating the oil from the meal. We evaluated six different presses, the Ag Oil M70, the Keller KEKP0020, the Kerncraft KK40, the Comet CA59G3, the Oil Prince, also known as the Kerncraft 20F, and the Tabby 70. Hi, I'm Natasha Rainville. I work on Borderview Farm in Alberg, Vermont, doing oil pressing for research for UVM, and I also make biodiesel. This is the Ag Oil M70, and it costs $8,500, and we use it pretty regularly on the farm for pressing our seed. Usually it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to heat it up to a temperature you want to press seed. This machine comes with three different size nozzles. We've been using the largest nozzle that it comes with. To, this machine you have to polish up the nozzles with some sort of little brush on a screwdriver end or something before you can get good outcome for it. We haven't really had any issues with it. The only thing that I've had to pay attention to is how the meal comes out. See if it's too hard or too oily or just if it crumbles and falls apart then there may be the machine might be too hot or too cold or the seed might not have enough oil so you can just turn it off if you're done with the seed that you're pressing and leave it and clean it out when you're ready to use it again or you can clean it right off when you take it apart it does, doesn't make a difference at all this machine can run uh, about six to 800 pounds is what we fit in these bags up here and it'll take if we leave it at a setting of between 64 and 59 hertz it will uh, take about 20 hours to press and we can increase that speed or we can decrease it depending on if someone is going to be coming in My name is Doug Schaufler and I work here at Penn State. I want to talk a little bit about the press that a farmer by the name of Lloyd Byers down in Liverpool, Liverpool, Pennsylvania uses. A few years back he got into growing some canola and some sunflowers for oil, got interested in it as an alternative fuel, and uses it to mix with conventional diesel fuel and then uses it, mixes about 50-50 with vegetable oil, and uses it in his tractors and skid steer loader and other diesel engines. The press he uses is this Keller press made by Egon Keller. It's a German company and is one of many from, from Europe that makes an oilseed press. The one he's got has a three-phase electric motor and a variable speed mechanical drive so he can vary the speed of the screw. And then there's a choke sort of a mechanism that's it's tightened with three screws on the output of the barrel and that changes the back pressure on the barrel and allows the pressing of different sorts of seeds. One of Mr. Byers favorite things to say about the press is that when he first got it he asked the distributor just 
how we should set it up. He's a kind of a guy who likes to know how to set things up before you just turn them on. But he was told that, that it just runs, and he said he called the guy a couple times and was always told that just put seed in it and it runs. So finally he just put some seed in it and turned it on, and like the guy said, it just runs. Um, he doesn't preheat it at all. He just puts the seed in. He sometimes adjusts the output screws a little bit um, for different seeds and whatnot to get the meal feeling the, the right consistency. But he has it set up with a couple of paddle switches on a small hopper above the oil seed press, and he runs it out of a grain bin or a grain trailer and just keeps that hopper above it full and just turns it on and leaves it. It doesn't take any babysitting or anything of that sort. He's got a filter press now and is filtering the oil, so the oil is cleaner than when he was just settling it. He doesn't change his fuel filters nearly as often as he used to and has increased the amount of vegetable oil he's mixing in with the petroleum diesel now. Overall, Mr. Byers has been real happy with this press. He said, as he said, it just runs and he doesn't really have to take care of it at all. Mr. L Mr. Byers has been a happy customer of this particular press. Hi, my name is Roger Rainville. I am uh, the owner of Border View Farm, uh, where we uh, hold all our research projects for the University of Vermont Extension. And this is a Kerncraft 40, KK40. It's the, uh, an oil press that we probably do the majority of our oil pressing on. It's a twin screw, as you can see. Uh, we've run this now for like four years and probably press around 60 tons of sunflower canola seed through this. The oil press itself has, uh, like I mentioned, uh, two oil barrels. Uh, crush barrels with uh, they have little holes in them where the oil is excreted through. It has two screws. Uh, this is a they have a hard seed screw and a soft seed screw. So this is the crush head, and the crush nozzle is just a, a nozzles that are for different uh, seeds that we press. Uh, the, the nozzles have different sizes, so we will go to a larger size, say for sunflower, and a smaller side for canola, uh, different sizes for flax or what have you. Uh, the oil press itself is a five horsepower oil press. It's a variable speed, so it can be run at different RPMs, revolutions per minute, so the screws turn at different speeds. We run around 1,000 pounds in 24 hours of seed through the press. It varies again with the different types of seed that you're pressing. Uh, it's a, the press is uh, fairly automated. Uh, we just run a one ton bag of seed over the top and gravity feed it into the hopper and we'll let it run 24 hours a day and usually seven days a week depending on how much seed that we have. The seed does not press properly unless the heads are warmed up. So we'll put these heaters on the, the press head once it's all put back together and we'll heat, heat these heads up to 120 degrees, 130 degrees. That, that's very important if, to get the seed to start pressing properly. Once we get the heads heated up, we'll run the seed into the hopper and start pressing, turning, turn the unit on and start pushing the seed through and we'll see the oil start coming out. Once the oil starts coming out, through these crush head barrel, these little holes, and we'll shut the machine down, put these nozzles on, get the right nozzle for the right seed, put the nozzles in, and once that's all together, we just have our containers wherever, wherever we may need them to put the oil and the meal in. Uh, one of the things that's really critical with the, with the, the Kerncraft is if the screw gets a blemish on it from either be getting too hot or too cold, it, it will stop pushing the seed through. It doesn't seem like a very critical uh, thing to happen, but if it darkens up because the screw got, got hot, we have to polish it. And we have a polisher with different, uh, like a, a material that you put on a wheel and you buff that and it cuts that, pol that uh, blemish out of there and it brings the screw back to a real sh shine. If it's not real shiny, for whatever reason, the, the seed does not want to flow. One of the issues that we have to be very concerned about is metal. Uh, we've had some issues where we've had metal get into the seed 
and uh, that really works wonders on the on the screws and the barrel. Um, so we've just set up a small screening uh, screen set up where we run our seed through it with magnets on it to make sure that we don't have any uh, metal getting into the presses. One nice thing about Kerncraft that we've learned is that the company has been super to work with. We call them, they respond immediately, they go through and do whatever needs to be done to get us on the right track to get things solved. Hi, my name is Doug Schaufler. I work here at Penn State University, and this is the oil seed press that we use for taking to different shows and whatnot to show what an oil seed press looks like and how it works. <clears throat> this is a common CA-59 press, model number CA-59, Comet is K-O-M-E-T, but it's actually made by the IBG Montfort company. It's a German press made in Germany, so all of the belts and the bolts, threads, everything is metric on it, including the electric motor. It's a typical screw type press with a hopper above it and for larger use for long term running without a lot of feeding of the hopper you want to put a different hopper above that, that feeds into this hopper or feeds directly into this, this apparatus. The screw brings the seat out, presses it, the wheel comes back, rips out. Things that are adjustable on this, you can adjust the tip size so that the hole that the meal is coming out of is smaller. So for canola, you use a smaller size, maybe a 5 millimeter size die. For sunflowers, maybe a 10 millimeter size die. The tip is held firmly against the barrel, and there's no way to vary the distance between the end of the screw and the end of the, the tip where the actual pressing is taking place. So some of the larger presses you can vary that distance. On this press, it's smaller, and you can't do that. This is the smallest electrically operated press that Comet makes. We've used it for a fair amount of canola. We've used it for sunflowers with the hulls on and sunflowers without the hulls on. We use it for camelina, for Brazil nuts, and for some other things that, that people have small amounts of that they just want to see if they can get oil out of niger seed, um, some other small quantities. It has a heater that was purchased at the time this was purchased, and that fits on over the barrel, usually about 10 minutes of heating. This is a control unit, so you can set a set temperature. It has a feedback so that it will hold a certain temperature on the press head, or you can just let it be on for about 10 minutes for, for canola, and then take, the, take this off, and the pressing continues on with the um, heat of the pressing is enough to keep it, keep it going. It's got the on-off switch here. The electric motor is coupled to a variable speed drive, so you do have the option of being able so you do have the option of changing the speed that the screw runs at. That drives back to two belts that are under this housing. Those two belts drive another pulley, come back to a speed reducer, and the, the actual final drive for the um, for the screw. This has been a real reliable, real consistent machine. We can leave it overnight with no problems, let it run overnight as long as there's a place for the oil to go to and a place to collect the meal and a large enough source for the seeds on top. It's also been reliable enough that we've sent it off to other people with a one-page instruction manual and it's gone down to the Pennsylvania Farm Show and other people have been able to set it up and use it. Some of the things that are a little different on it, you'll notice that the motor has black housing where everything else is green. We're in, we're in the middle of replacing the motor on it. Um, it had a 230 volt 50 hertz motor, the, the European standard for frequency for electric appliances. This particular motor we're replacing it with is 115 volts and a 60 hertz motor. The other one did um, burn out at the demonstration last couple weeks ago, and so we're replacing it with a 115 volt motor. And we did find that through a distributor in the U.S. It's a Lafert, L-A-F-E-R-T is the name on the motor. Um, it's actually an Italian built motor, but they have US 60 hertz frequencies available. The correct power and the correct mount especially is what we needed, because that's what's really different between US motors and the metric motors. The shaft size, the key size, and the actual mounting dimensions. So that's being replaced. It should make it much more 
much easier to use here in the U.S. We used to have a converter we had to haul around with us, and that probably is part of the issue of why the motor uh, is still heavy. Two people, you need two people at least to pick it up and move it. It's not something you can just easily throw in the back of your car and take somewhere. But it is, but once it's on a cart, it's easily moved around. Welcome to Copple House Farm in Lee, New Hampshire. I am John Hutton. My wife Carol and I own our farm here and we have gone into oilseed production. We are primarily right now we're looking at canola and soybeans. We are also doing some sunflowers for another farm as far as processing goes. Um, this is our oil prints that we purchased from Circle Energy out in Wisconsin. Purchase cost of this machine was right around $6,000. Um, we basically have our feed hopper is here. This is our sieve barrel here and our have a worm gear inside. It drives the meal against the press head and then there are four weep channels that come back to our sieve head and then we have our ports here for different size for our meal size and also can slow down or speed up uh, the rate of what your meal goes through here. This machine has a lot of settings on it so we can adjust the worm speed very easily, very quickly, um, very quiet, very efficient. It doesn't really cost us a lot of money to run this as far as electricity goes. Um, when you get the machine going, the only thing that we've noticed about this machine is the hopper. Uh, we are going to change the hopper around a little bit so that we're not constantly having to refill it. So that's something we're looking for in the future. We have two worm screws. We have the screw that's in there currently right now is, is for canola. This one right here is for your harder seed, for uh, soybeans, uh, flax, something like that. Um, of course, they come a little keyway. They're very easy to put in and out. I mean, it's just a matter of backing this off. You slide this, slide the other one out, put this one in, and you're ready to go. Um, you can adjust your port size very easily. Um, you can. With this wrench, you can back this port off. You can, you can go up and down um, by half sizes, whole sizes. It's very easy to do. Uh, you can kind of do it on the run if you need to. Um, the gap is easy to adjust. Um, one thing we did have to do with this machine is we did have to uh, custom make our own tool to uh, adjust the gap against the pressed head, which has uh, actually been an improvement on German engineering. So probably they'll be looking at this and coming up with their own tool to <laughs> sell you at some point in time. The nice thing about this machine is that it is very easy to stop and readjust it and you can play with this machine and not spend a lot of time and you're back to pressing again and you can look at your results right off the bat. You don't have to wait two or three hours. You're, basically 20 minutes you can make adjustments and you're back pressing again. We can do about three to three and a half gallons an hour and not have someone have to babysit the machine constantly. I have noticed that sunflowers um, you're better off as soon as you get this thing apart you know take the time go right down and clean it. Um, there is a the oil will shellac a little bit as far as the sunflower goes and it is a little harder to get clean but a little detergent soft brush and you're good to go. But don't, don't let it hang around. You know, when you take it apart, go clean it. I'm John Williamson, and uh, we're at Stayline Farm here in West Shaftesbury, Vermont. This is a, a Tabby Model 70. Uh, it's a food grade oil mill. It was about uh, $6,500 to purchase the mill. The reason we purchased it was one of the most efficient mills we could find. I uh, spent like 3,600 hours on it, and we've probably pressed soybeans and canola and mustard, flax, uh, safflower, camelina, cranby. I probably have, I don't know, 25 or 30 of these different sized dyes. So there's three. Um, so it's just a piece of bar stock with a hole board in it. Um, so you can make these as they wear. This one here is the sunflower one that's had like six or seven years with the sunflowers run through it. So it's got some wear on this leading edge. Um, so as one edge wears, you can flip it over and install it the other way. So there's an adjustment on this part of the mill that holds this nozzle in place. So you can back this off and take it off and have access to the screw that's inside. So. 
So that's the butt end of the screw or the head end. And then this press head is fluted. So there's some grinding action that takes place and, and then the grain's forced into that nozzle and that's where that nozzle is seated right there. So you can thread this in and there's an adjustment here. You can thread it in so it fits very tightly to the end of that screw or you can leave a little bit of a gap depending on the size of the grain and where you want that fluted part to mate with the end of the screw. But I haven't found to make a heck of a lot of difference where, where it's at, it's tighter or looser. It doesn't seem to affect the yield very much. So that's all it is. The grain enters this part of the screw and is just, you know, driven forward to it, uh, you know, gets to the nozzle. That's how it fits, fits in there. It came with a spare screw, but it'll probably take the rest of my life to wear the first one out. It's kind of an art to learn how to run an oil mill. We've run probably 60 ton of seed through it, and we're still learning. We have played with this machine quite a bit, and we have found that when you find a setting that really works for you really well, um, you just leave it alone. Just from past experiences, I got a pretty good idea what size nozzle to install in the end of the mill. Depending on how dry the seed is, though, will really increase the temperature of the nozzle. The cleaner it is, the nicer your oil, the nicer your meal. Uh, we've learned a few things that you don't do. You don't store uh, pellets in a plastic barrel. That's uh, tantamount to just storing it away. It's going to go moldy on you very quickly. So that's, that's a freebie from us. Moisture is a big uh, uh, issue. If your moisture is too high, you don't, it doesn't press well. If the moisture if it's too dry, it doesn't press well. You don't get the same, you can't extract the, the same amount of oil out of it unless the, the, the oil uh, moisture, the seed moisture is at a certain level and that's all in the university uh, extensions uh, literature. If you need to know what certain seed needs to be certain moisture, uh, that's all available through the university extension.